Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fischel and welcome to bonus weather video number one for this week and the first one of 2023 and we're going to talk about fronts and air masses and a couple of times over the years I've heard somebody say yeah I remember that cold front that lasted seven days well it just indicates that there's uh, some misconceptions out there about fronts and air masses so I thought I would try to clear that up today so let's go on ahead and take a look at uh, first of all case one where we have a cold air mass denoted in blue and a warm air mass denoted in, I guess, sort of an orangish red there. And in this particular case, we're going to call this a cold front because the cold air is actually advancing toward the warm air and the cold air is more dense than warm air. And so it pretty much does what it wants to do. And so the warm air mass says, I surrender, I surrender, I give up, and the cold air comes in to replace it. And so we denote that as a blue line with a succession of triangles along it uh, pointing toward the direction that the cold air is moving. And so that is what we refer to as a cold front. Now, same scenario with the air masses. And the, the front, in all these cases, is just a boundary, okay? If something affects you for many days, it's the air mass, okay? Depending on what side of the front you're on, but it's the air mass that lasts for a long time. The front actually only affects you for a very short period of time. It's just when the transition is occurring between one air mass to the next. Okay, so here we've got our cold air mass and our warm air mass. Now, in this particular case, the cold air is saying, I surrender, or I'm out of here. I don't like this area anymore, so I'm leaving. And warm air, you have an open invitation to come in and take my place. The warm air will not push the cold air out of the way. It can't do it because it's less dense. But if the cold air leaves willingly, then the warm air can come in to replace it. So in this case, meteorologists denote this is a red line with a series of red semicircles, if you will, uh, more or less pointing in the direction that the warm air is advancing. Okay, and we call that a warm front. Now, case number three, we have a cold air mass and a warm air mass, but the boundary between the two is not moving. Okay, and so we denote that as a line with alternating red semicircles and blue triangles, and we call that a stationary front. And if you want to get real technical, meteorologists oftentimes refer to this as quasi-stationary or almost stationary, because if it's literally stationary, that means it's not even moving a millimeter, okay? Well, air masses sort of slosh back and forth, and so there probably is some movement, but it's just looking at it from a large-scale perspective it basically is not moving, and so we call it a stationary front. Now, many, many years ago, at the end of World War I, uh, there were some Norwegian meteorologists that came up with something called the Norwegian Cyclone Model, and this is how they basically explained it, is that they said you have a boundary, in this case we'll call it a stationary front, between cold air to the north and warm air to the south. And then an area of low pressure forms along that front. And in the northern hemisphere, that's going to mean a counterclockwise circulation. And so in here, you would have air moving northward, okay, so the cold air would be retreating and the warm air advancing, and over here, because of the counterclockwise circulation, you'd have the cold air advancing toward the south. So what ends up happening is you get something like this, where instead of the boundary being east-west, the warm air moves north on the east side of the low, the cold air moves south on the west side of the low, and you end up uh, with a configuration like the one you see there on the right-hand portion of your screen. And this low will continue to intensify until something begins to happen. And let's go on ahead and talk about that something right now. So here we have our low pressure area. Now we're going to show a purple line with alternating uh, triangles and semicircles, but this time on the same side of the line, okay? And then here's your cold front and there's your warm front. Now, the Norwegian meteorologists proposed this idea that the cold air is advancing more quickly around the cyclone circulation than the warm front is advancing to the east of the circulation. And eventually that cold front overtakes the warm front. And so now the, cold, or the low is surrounded by cold air and the occluded front that you see there in purple basically just becomes a front aloft, okay? It no longer exists at the surface because the cold air is wrapped all the way around the low. There still is a boundary up there, uh, and there'll, there'll be a wind shift. You'll actually see a wind shift as the occluded front comes through, but you don't have nearly the amount of temperature contrast across it because basically 
again, the cold air is wrapped all the way around the low. Now, later in the 1980s, there was another model proposed called the Shapiro-Kaiser model. And in this particular situation, the cold front did not overtake the warm front. But in a sense, the cold front fractured, okay, from the low itself. And so eventually the same problem exists where the low is surrounded by air that is pretty much uh, equally cold or equally warm. And once it detaches from that warm, moist, unstable air, it no longer has that temperature contrast to work off of. And so the low begins to weaken. But it's simply a different process that's described as to how we get to that end stage. Uh, and it's different than the cold front overtaking the warm front, which is what the Norwegian meteorologists originally proposed. And, of course, the details on all of this go way beyond the scope of a video like this. Uh, but, again, the bottom line is as long as that low has access to both cold and warm air, it's going to intensify. As soon as it becomes isolated from that temperature contrast, then it begins to weaken at that point in time because it no longer has that energy source between the two dissimilar air masses to work off of. Okay, I hope that made some sense, fronts and air masses and so forth. Uh, we'll have another bonus weather video coming up for you on Friday and, of course, another daily weather update coming up for you tomorrow. We'll see you then. Oh, and by the way, you know what they say about stationary fronts? They always look really good on paper. Take care, everybody.